So uh, before we move forward, as per the customs or what we say in Hindi, the pratha, let's go with the table of contents. Okay, so we'll be covering uh, significance of industrial engineering, then uh, history and evolution of industrial engineering, then uh, we'll take a small overview of industrial engineering, then the tools and software what we use to uh, uh, do that. And uh, Six Sigma methodology, which you must have heard a lot, we will just uh, uh, give an uh, overview of that with a real life case study, which we have experienced in there. Uh, then this is recipe, the smart manufacturing transforming operation. It looks fancy, right? Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have made it fancy only. So actually, this is something that, uh, you know, which is related to the state of art uh, technology, which is transforming the operations concepts. So, and in the end, of course, uh, why actually we are doing this engineering? So career path and job opportunities, which I think most of the students will find very relevant and useful. So uh, let's get to, get on with it. So uh, every system, you know, not manually put into action requires an industrial engineer, starting right from the beginning till the end. It's a very true uh, statement. Okay, when we talk about like you know uh, any process which is not God made, okay, which uh, which uh, you have made, every that process you know requires an industrial engineering from start till the end that is particularly the relevance of this industrial engineering so if we uh, talk about like you know uh, another perspective like you know normal normally what engineers do they make things like uh, you know electricians you know they make the uh, transmission lines they uh, produce transformers and what but in the pro, uh, in the careers of, okay, of producing that you know the quality product and all that industrial engineers come into picture we make things better okay so why I'm saying we, can, you know, I started as an electronics and communication engineer and ended up as an industrial engineer seeing so much interest in that. So it is a very interesting and common sense uh, sort of engineering. So you will also love it. So another thing, look at this picture, okay? The child is healthy as per you. The first one looks underweight, uh, right one uh, looks overweight. So of course the middle one is the most healthier one, right? Now, if, if I ask you, you know, what type of body you will want? Would you, would, would you like to be underweight? Would you like to be overweight? Or would you like to be lean? Of course, you would like to be lean, right? Okay, uh, why you would like to be lean? Because anyhow, you are going to be living, right? You will not be dead if you are uh, underweight or overweight. Just to make you look attractive, okay? Just to make, uh, make you, you know, uh, healthy. Just to just make you actually live the life and not drag upon uh, to the life, right? So that is the same concept that applies to the industry. An industry works irrespective of the efforts made to cut down the unnecessary weights. Just like you eat, uh, eat pizzas, burgers, and junk foods too in your in your daily life, okay, uh, and uh, you are just you know putting in waste, okay. But actually, you know you are still living. So the same way, same thing happens for the industry. It still lives, whether you cut down the waste or not. The second thing is the industry works whether we take care of the quality or not. Now you are underweight, you are overweight. You know the attractive you looks irrespective of that, they are making profits. Now, how for how long they will be making profit, it, does, it is not sure, but at present, they're making profits. Okay, so, but still people work out for being normal to live longer and healthier to avoid numerous diseases they might catch otherwise. There are other benefits also, but let us not discuss them in uh, this form, okay? So, <clears throat> now industries need optimization too in order to sustain and grow. Now, there is a biggest myth, and that myth is industrial engineering is relevant to manufacturing industries alone, okay? This is not true, okay? Every particular industry, whether it is a service industry or a manufacturing industry, it is having a process. And where, as I told before, wherever there is a process, there is a need of an industrial engineer, okay? So, this is a particular myth. So, it requires both, it is required in both in service as well as manufacturing industries. Now in manufacturing industry, how it helps? It improves labor, material and production process efficiency. It promotes safety, health and working environment. Now you'll talk about like industrial engineering includes almost everything. Labor, material, production, process, safety, health and working environment. Yes, it includes everything. That is why it is so much relevant. Improves product quality, yes. Improves ergonomics. Ergonomics is nothing but a human uh, you know, motion study. So a human study actually, you know, how you sit Okay, how, how you have to uh, efficiently perform by your gesture, your postures. That's what is uh, the ergonomics. 
okay the layout of the production facility of course you know the lean layouts you must have heard about lean uh, term in industrial engineering then there is improves material handling and reduces the lead time okay the best example uh, for this uh, manufacturing industry where industrial engineering has done, done wonders is caterpillar it was going to fail okay it was going to be closed but industrial engineering saved it and then there is a company here in pune itself where i am working sunny you can search about it also the sunny s a n y that company also you know uh, was going to fail okay and uh, uh, all of a sudden then the industrial engineers were hired okay in those that industrial engineers saved it okay now the sunny is performing in profits and uh, it is also a crane building company so just like caterpillar and uh, you must have heard about toyota production system so of course you know industrial engineering has uh, you know come out of it only okay the toyota production system is said to be the father of all production systems in service industries like it hospitality healthcare services as well it is very much important so it ensures timely service delivery optimizes the cost as the pricing is even more critical here why it is more critical we'll discuss as soon as we discuss one example it standardizes the process to ensure similar experience for all customers now you won't like you know going to one restaurant and then to a franchisee a different franchisee and you get a different taste you will say that you know the the particular restaurant which was the initial one it was having a great taste now this uh, restaurant is not having a, a good taste so for that standardization industrial engineering is required improves the layout for better customer satisfaction have you uh, ever gone to mcdonalds so uh, in mcdonalds have you observed that as soon as you order a mac aloo tikki burger it comes in 11.2 seconds this is the beauty of industrial engineering exactly in 11.2 seconds it will be delivered to you the moment you order this is this is how you know we take care of uh, the industrial engineering principles so that whenever the, there is actual performance you get in the standardized delivery uh, term and then the customer is satisfied now imagine you are sitting in a restaurant and the waiter is not coming waiter says sir 5 minutes more 10 minutes more now people are taking their own sweet time that is the thing industrial engineering comes into picture and it deskills the processes so whether uh, ram is working whether sham is working it is irrespective of that uh, it does not matter and uh, normally what will happen it will give, give the perfect standardized delivery now let's get to the roots of industrial engineering how it started okay it is believed to be started in the uh, time of industrial revolution which was in you know the 17th century okay so in 1700 steam engine was invented uh, to replace human power by machine power you know uh, by james watt and then 1800s you know factories replaced the traditional production systems after that frederick winslow taylor who, who is said to be the father of industrial engineering devised you know that motion time study and operations efficiency now this laid the foundation of industrial engineering okay and uh, then henry ford in 1920s developed the assembly line which you know drastically reduced the time, uh, you know cycle time to 720 uh, minutes to uh, 90 minutes like you know the the, uh, the uh, improvement was phenomenal and if you talk about uh, like uh, Uh, the assembly line which he developed you know it reduced the cost of the car also he could sell at a very lower cost okay so henry ford uh, took that breakthrough by introducing the assembly lines and then world war 2 laid the foundation of operations research for decision making there the industrial engineering relevance in the service sector came into picture then computer revolution revolutionized the industrial engineering concept by providing the touch of robotics artificial intelligence and machine learning okay actually in short if you want to brief it it is just nothing like the industrial evolution which you are talking about the first industry industry 1.0 to industry 4.0 that journey is actually the story of industrial engineering now we are talking about the robots who uh, you know uh, uh, they think like humans how they think like humans they we teach them okay that this is the particular scenario now uh, if that scenario is repeated he will you know it will perform like it has uh, been taught uh, to perform before this is how they learn themselves just like a human learns from the childhood so that's the level of uh, evolution we have achieved in industrial engineering now what is actually industrial engineering it is this just nothing but a common sense although common sense is not so common okay but uh, whosoever is having a common sense he can do industrial engineering that's that's a beautiful beauty of this particular branch of engineering 
So uh, let us go with the you know, overview of industrial engineering. What is, if you want to define an industrial engineering, I will define in the best suitable, uh, you know, uh, purpose. It will be like, you know, minimizing the resources, maximizing the output. So it just optimizes the process to give the maximum output with the minimum resources. But that is what the target of every business, right? So that is how industrial engineering is being defined. Okay, so what the question is how? How we achieve those things? We achieve step by step using uh, these industrial engineering principles. So the first step comes into value engineering. This is the reduction of raw material cost itself. Now for everything, there is a raw material involved, whether in one manufacturing or in a service sector, you know, you will be uh, taking a minimum of fixed overheads, right? So uh, that also is there and for any, uh, you know, like service you have to provide, there will be a minimum cost, you know, standard cost involved in that. Okay. If we are to reduce that standard cost itself, that is known as value engineering. So uh, the motion time study. So the motion time study, you know, the second point is it is a beautiful science where we are talking about like, you know, the time and motion are combined. So you know about most, have you heard about Maynard technique? Okay, so these were the scientists, okay, 1942 to 1943, they studied for 11 years, 20,000 videos, and then they devised this uh, motion time study, which says that even we want to grasp a particular pen, or we want to release a particular object that is having a standard time. That is the beauty of motion time study. And that is what is applied to industrial engineering. So are you seeing how it is in you know, a step-by-step developing the you know, processes, improving the processes? Third one is operations research. So now we talk about the decision analysis. What is the habit? What is the habit of a particular human being? We jump to conclusions. We jump to conclusion. Somebody uh, tells you a story. Okay. We always say, oh, th this has happened. This happened with me also. Okay. And this is, this has to be the result. Okay. This is the human tendency. For that, we need a standardized tool to you know, just uh, not to get the biased result, to, not to get the biased decision. That is what is operations research is for. So we have a statistical model. We have regressions and, uh, you know, solver techniques where we uh, come to know that, okay, this is the particular scenario. This is the mean. This is the st standard scenario. This is the trend. So this has to be the decision, not what we are thinking in our mind. And maximum uh, number of times what we think by the first impression, it is 90% of the time wrong. So that is where the importance of operations research come into picture. Then there is production planning and control. Obviously, it is a very beautiful tool for manufacturing engineering. But uh, nowadays in service also, we have a demand planner. So like uh, in airline industry, uh, for, for example, Indigo and Air India, these all what, what they see is that, okay, what, are, what is the trend before? And on the basis of that, they forecast that how many number of passengers will be seated seated over there. That, that, that's how they decide their fleet size. That's how they decide the number of uh, airplanes they will be operating with. Okay. And the flight schedule is scheduled uh, that way only. That okay, in what particular scenario, the maximum passengers are coming into picture that operations research combined with PPC, production planning and control. Then inventory control. Now inventory is something, you know, uh, have you, uh, you know, observed that a car, which is not used for many years, it gets rusted. And then when you use it, it uh, gives you a sound, which does not gives you a very soothing uh, image. And you get scared out of it, right? So that, that's how what happens with the inventory. Excess inventory is just like a rusted iron. Okay. If it's ever it's in use, it's very beautiful. But if you keep on accumulating, it becomes a waste. So inventory control is also a principle of this industry. Then there is a standardization. Again, as I explained before, there has to be a de-skilling of uh, a person. A person will take a different time. B person will take a different time to do the same job. Okay. If we de-skill the process, both the person will be taking similar time without even they, their information or without even their experience. Sustenance and continuous improvement model. Of course, everything is done to, there is always a scope of improvement. That is the principle of engineering. That is the basis of every particular engineering. So there is always a scope of improvement. So for that, sustenance and continuous improvement models are uh, being introduced. And that is uh, what is introduced by industrial engineering again. Lean tools. Now, lean is nothing but, you know, uh, the Toyota production system we are talking about, the Schneider production system we are talking about, all the big, these production systems, which is having the 5S, you know, 
that uh, now these terms may be a bit typical don't get into that don't get scared by those things uh, if you have any questions later on i'll take up those questions also okay so that is about lean manufacturing which is saying again the optimization of processes to give the maximum output ergonomics which i told before also it is human engineering so here how you sit how you stand to uh, improve your working efficiency you must not even have uh, heard about it that okay uh, the way you stand the way you sit it improves your efficiency okay that's why it is said that sit straight when you are studying and it improves your learning efficiency it improves your working efficiency okay now industrial engineering techniques so we have a certain techniques for that the product design efficiency improvement for value engineering okay process efficiency improvement uh, uh, we have uh, for that uh, that motion time study okay and uh, the lean tools the product of process optimization again the lean tools and continuous improvement models application of statistic this is again from the part of operations research which we discussed uh, a few minutes before okay the six sigma engineering economic analysis now this is something which is related to cost benefit analysis we when we whenever we design a product there has to be a life cycle cost what what is the use of designing a product which will not uh, give profit to the organization okay there is a concept go giver concept okay there is a go getter concept there is a go giver concept but is there a concept where we just we are giving and we are, uh, we are not getting it at all there is not a concept at all any any business cannot sustain without profits so ultimately if something is not uh, you know making profits we deny it we don't uh, you know entertain it at all that is also a beauty of industrial engineering okay human effort engineering you know motion analysis which we discussed before then there is measurement the work cost productivity that okay work content how much is the work content what is the productivity we are getting how many how much how many resources are needed to give a particular output and how we can improve it okay what is the cost and world and the cost and world uh, you know if we take it to the depth uh, we are you know switching on the tube light okay there are three persons working in a room we are switching on the tube light we what we consider is you know we are considering that okay that those three persons are the cost are we considering that the tube light over there has been divided into the work content as well okay the fan which is working over there the ac which is working so everything every single fixed overhead is also a part of the cost that we have to minimize okay by utilizing the best of it productivity management again the similar thing then what are the tools and software used in industrial engineering so the tools and the software is used uh, you know uh, uh, always say that you know let us aid you okay we leave it on the tools itself okay we don't think much we just use the tools and we get the results so the tools use are seven qc tools you must be aware about it also the cause and effect analysis which is used for root cause analysis check sheet which is used for data collection control chart which is used for process behavior analysis now why these tools are being used because before without the data collection without analyzing that we cannot arrive to any decision and we cannot uh, do any improvements right so for those things these are the tools then there is histogram which is the frequency distribution in other words okay then pareto chart 80 20 analysis which says that 80% of uh, the problems lies in the 20% of the cases okay then there is scatter diagram which gives us the variable relationship that what how exactly a particular variable is dependent upon the input variable then there is stratification or sampling okay we always have a particular sample out of it you know considering that okay uh, this particular uh, random sample represents the complete population okay then there is value stream mapping okay value stream mapping you must be aware about it is just you know uh continuously finding out that what is the uh, you know present process and how we can improve it so we develop the current process and accordingly we put some changes in that uh, that chart and we produce a future value stream map which is a proposed model by improvements this is this is how value stream mapping works it is altogether a new concept uh, a different concept okay so if we get deeper into this you now uh, another a time might not allow so that's why i'm not going deep but you can always ask questions lean six sigma and fmea we will go in deep in uh, details after this slide lean management toyota production system and others statistical modeling and statistical process control methods time measurement mtm and mena technique which we talked about motion time study total productive maintenance tpm this is a very beautiful tool we'll discuss if you uh, need to discuss in detail 
value analysis and value engineering, which we talk about, uh, the value engineering, which we talked about in uh, the previous slides. This is what it is. We are reducing the cost of the metal itself. Linear programming. This is a optimization tool. For example, the flight scheduling and the raw metals and all the planning and all for that, this tool is needed. Softwares, we use advanced MS Excel. This is the most beautiful tool developed by Bill Gates. And uh, you know we, we should be happy to use it. Why develop a different you know, scenario, different uh, tool groups and all, uh, whatever you want. <laughs> MS Excel is the best tool. Okay, then SPSS is again another advanced version uh, of it uh, where you can use a statistical model. W is there, Neatab are there, R, Python, SQL, MATLAB, these are the there, these are there, the softwares. AutoCAD and CATIA is there for designing purpose. Okay, uh, so these are the tool uh, you know which we uh, can use to uh, enact industrial engineering in a better way. Now let us study Six Sigma methodology in uh, detail with the real life case study. What exactly is Six Sigma? It is uh, nothing but a metric which demonstrates the quality level of 99.9967% performance, 99.967% performance. Now this figure is arrived for, uh, you know, uh, from a particular study, which we'll discuss in the, th uh, you know, the three slides later, okay? Then there is a benchmark. It creates a benchmark for product and process capability. Obviously, there will be a you know, certain scenario where we'll be seeing that, okay, this is to, this is where we are today and there we, we want to go, okay? We will create a present uh, scenario and then according to that, we'll propose a scenario. That is what is benchmark. Then there is a tool. So to, it is a tool to measure, analyze, improve and control processes. And there is a, there is a commitment. It is a commitment to deliver best quality products to customers. Now, if we want to define it, it is a data-driven disciplined approach to eliminate defects in a process from manufacturing to transactional and from products to services. Again, the same thing, please observe, it is used both in manufacturing as well as service industry. Okay, it is a, just a disciplined data-driven approach, which gives us a good decision-making capability and improvement cap uh, capability. So management philosophy, uh, what it says is integrating quality and daily work, satisfying customer needs, probability, continual improvement. Okay. And then process capability says statistical measure of a process. So in both the ways it is used. Standard of deviation, as you uh, very well know, it is a measure of deviation. Now, how did Six Sigma methodology came into picture? Okay. There was, there is a uh, very beautiful story, you know, uh, by a Motorola engineer, okay? it uh, happened in 1987, you know, he was given a target of zero defect. Okay, then the, the, he analyzed that the defect was very huge. And on the basis of that, when uh, he just decided that he has to do something. And on the basis of that, you know, the target was, uh, you know, he decided to bring down from 30,000 ppm to 3 ppm. If not zero, he just took the target to bring it down to 3 ppm. And uh, his name was Bob Galvin. Okay. So tenfold improvement was expected every year. For this, there had to be a standard tool that has to be developed. Okay. There was no Six Sigma methodology. There were nothing before. Okay. So then Texas Instruments and ABB worked with Motorola since 1984 to develop this concept. And now by 1997, this concept was taken by industries worldwide. This is the history of Six Sigma. Okay. So was it successful? Of course it was successful. 300 million were spent and 800 US uh, dollars were, you know, returned within two years. So 500 million dollar, uh, you know, uh, we got from 300 uh, uh, million investments, 500 million dollar we saved. So that is a huge uh, saving, right? Now let us learn about Six Sigma. It is DMAC. You know, just pronounce it as DMAC. What is DMAC? Define measure, analyze, improve, and control, okay? Defining the problem, quantifying the problem, identifying the cause of the problem, implementing and verifying, and then maintaining the solution. Now, this is a very beautiful concept, which we were saying before that, okay, before going to the Six Sigma, what is actually Sigma? Sigma is nothing but the standard deviation. Now the question must be coming, that why we call it a Six Sigma, okay? There is a table which is known as Z table or Z table in uh, in your terms. Okay, that that table confirms that okay, what is the standard deviation uh, giving the what is the area covered under that particular standard deviation? Normally, whenever we talk about random distribution uh, table, we have a normal distribution curve which looks like uh, this uh, distribution curve. Look at my cursor if my cursor is visible. Okay, this particular I uh, you know uh, 
uh, curve which we uh, talk about is the standard uh, uh, curve which you use for most of the analysis now when when we are talking about a normal distribution curve okay there is nothing you know uh, permanent in this particular you know uh, nature everything changes after a certain period of time so we design on certain parameters now when, when we talk about z table what it shows is what is this area okay what is this area let us say we talk about 3 sigma so this is minus 3 to 3 okay now what is the area covered between uh, you know that so that that is given by the 3 sigma uh, curve so that that will be given by the z table okay you can just refer to the z table and it will give you that value now if it, that is the value of the uh, z the 6 sigma comes out to be uh, two parts per billion as the defects okay to two parts per billion as the defect it gives but normally when we talk about 6 sigma we say that only 3.4 defects per million opportunities are acceptable right it is 99.99967% uh, which we talked about in the first slide of 6 sigma that okay these are the uh, you know accurate or correct uh, you know opportunities given by 6 sigma okay so why it is 3.4 defects per part million uh, opportunities when actually the z value of 6 sigma is 2 billion par, uh, two, uh, two, par, two parts per billion it is because as i told you when you go for a groceries okay what you do we go for groceries now there is a covid situation okay you will go for groceries you will take a bit higher a bit more than you require in case the lockdown extends you have something to say that is the principle right here also in six sigma we design at six sigma and we consider that by worst case scenario worst case scenario it will not be less than 3.4 defects per million opportunity so we design a process as six sigma means two parts per billion uh, defects it should not be more than that but within six months or one month one year when it is a learning curve uh, for that particular process it might come down okay the defects might increase but they should not increase more than 3.4 defects per million opportunities that is the particular concept of six sigma and that is how that 3.4 defects per million opportunities has been arrived this is what is the explanation of that only okay so uh, by default it should be uh, it should be 99.9999998% but it is not it is like you know for the 1.5 sigma shift so actually the value we are get, getting is of 4.5 sigma that is 99.99967% now the six sigma methodology you have heard about statistics don't get scared by it most of us you know uh, does not know or understand in the first go it's completely understandable let us think about a similar same thing dabba walas understand six sigma so why can't you okay dabba walas uh, you know are the uh, the mumbai biggest you know service providers they provide tiffins the homemade food to people over there and they have a six sigma accuracy of providing you know, they are they have no failure complete best quality similar quality providing foods to everyone without a fail okay this is what is the standardization of process if they can follow the six sigma okay without even knowing much about it why can't you you can okay this is the best example which we, which i could give so i took the example of dabba walas now what is the significance of six sigma just imagine okay a doctor says i am you know very much i am 99% or 98.93% efficient which is 3.8 sigma okay 5000 incorrect surgical operations per week would you go to that doctor what if one of those 5000 it is you okay you'll die so it will not be acceptable right it looks very funny but when you talk about 98.93 wow what a percentage hmm? you have scored 98.93 no in industries nothing less than 100% is acceptable if doctor fails even once one time it is a failure okay that is why the relevance of six sigma comes comes into picture so when we talk about 3.8 sigma 5000 incorrect surgical operations per week but when it comes to six sigma it is just 1.7 incorrect uh, surgical operations per week which actually gets reduced to zero by other uh, you know uh, tools uh, combined with six sigma okay so that is the relevance of six sigma quality is the cause not the effect so as you all know cost of poor quality is the biggest hidden cost for any organization whenever we say poor quality you know it goes to the customer 
customer denies it he calls the he calls us for the warranty claims ultimately we end up spending more than what we had spent uh, in the manufacturing cost so why not you know spend a little bit uh, more in the investments made over there to develop the process to make it a better process so that we save a lot of cost in uh, future for the field failure rate okay that is the principle of significant uh, for six sigma okay there are certain examples like opportunity of sales market share customers consumers reputation everything falls okay even if uh, you know you will not go to a particular uh, you know a brand if uh, that brand calls you a kidney disorder right you will not go for that protein shake brand for example so that that's what is the impact okay now lean so again it is a pdca method pdca method is nothing but plan do check act simple plan do check act so accordingly eight waste or five waste these principles are employed using lean six sigma it is a dmac approach so tools like control charts which we discussed in seven qc tools and fmea failure mode effect analysis we will discuss a bit in detail uh, in next slide the uh, next few slides okay then lean six sigma is a combination of both two which says that we are using the best problem solving methods for customer satisfaction and to achieve the goals of the organization okay now what lean six sigma ensures it ensures increased productivity improved quality reduced operations cost higher customer satisfaction improved communication among team member this is very important bagal wala baat hi nahi karta matlab that is very simple hamara hamara major questions ye hai and the best problem you know we are having in the organization is the certain people sitting next to us doesn't talk he mails okay he mails instead of mailing why why can't he just you know stand up and say hey hey man i am having a problem can you can you help me simple right it improves the communication among team members by just developing a cross functional team okay improved accuracy control and compliance improves efficiency pan organization of course you know what six sigma does is it standardizes the processes so wherever that particular process is implemented it will give the same result irrespective of where it is implemented okay just you have to follow the rules better partnerships again the same thing okay customer loyalty of course once you get a good product you yeah, know for example there is a very you know beautiful organic supplement company you know neutralite by mb you know if a person uses this product okay what happens is you know he gets addicted to that means the, the quality is so good okay the person says yeah we'll go for that product only we'll not go for any other product okay now let us say if one single tablet given by neutralite causes you cancer would you would you even take a risk you will tell 10 other customers don't go with it huh? it causes you cancer so that is the level you know which we receive so once you deliver a good quality consistently you achieve customer loyalty 